Hello friends and welcome to Frightened Night Files and another episode of Autopsy Simulator. This story is really beginning to unravel. In the last episode, some guy ca called Red Pete got broke out of jail and somehow we are responsible for putting him in jail in the first place. So what's gonna happen next? Is Red Pete coming for us? Because weird stuff started happening uh, at our at our morgue or whatever it's called. Who the fuck did this? Oh yeah, valuable. he also had a break in in our apartment. The money. They must have stolen the money. Where's the trinket oh, box? God. Oh god! Oh no! Um, what am I supposed to do now? I don't know. <laughs> Let's find the trinket box. Is it in the office? Is it in the bedroom? Fuck! Here's the trinket box. Oh, that's our wife's stuff. Great. They're all here. That's all I need. <laughs> okay. What if it was Red Pete? Yeah. I think in the last episode, the audio was not... Let's bump it up a little bit. What happened? I don't know what happened. Where? I need my pills. Yeah. I, I can't get my thoughts together. Really need our pills now. Was it Red Pete? Who knows? I guess we'll find out. Here in chapter two, maybe. Okay. Ugh. I'm gonna have to report this to the police. Christ. Why did the neighbors not report anything? I'm calling Stephen. Stephen! Someone broke into my house. <sighs> Stephen? Now, Jack, I told you I'm going for a drink with you for another night in a row. That's not why I'm ringing, although I could do with one. Someone broke into my apartment. What? Did anyone see anything? Have you called the police yet? No, I don't think so. Anyway, no one contacted me. As for the police, uh, I'm calling right now, officer. <sighs> All right. Do you want me to head around? Look for any trace evidence? I, um... Is Steve and police? Uh, I don't know. No, I guess not. Uh, honestly... I don't have the strength to deal with it right now. I just want to lie down. Are you sure? Because it's no trouble at all. I think so. I'm sorry. I just wanted to calm down a bit. I don't know. Uh, that's probably some stupid joke. Mm -hmm. Only money was stolen. Money? From Alice's box? Oh, fuck. Listen, I can come over. I have the key. I'll drop by, do what I need to do, and you go get some sleep. No, don't trouble yourself. Lately, I've been just so tired and distracted. No oh, shit. Maybe I forgot to close the apartment door on my way to work. If anything else No, is I missing, didn't. I'll let you know and call the police. All right. Just make sure you close it tonight. If you see anything weird tomorrow, let me know. Whoever did this may be watching you. I don't think anyone is dumb enough to come back. <sighs> You're probably right. Take care, Jack. If you need anything, call me. I Thank promise. you, Steve. I will. Thanks, Stephen. Sorry to bother you again. I've just been all over the place lately. It's not a problem. Good night, Jack. Good night. Do you reckon it was Red Pete? Huh? Was the TV on all the time? What? What? Hello? I guess I should clean this shit up. Where really? Do start? Is this a cleanup simulator now? And this thing needs to be replaced. Jack, why? Just like all the other simul... Alice? I think I'm just tired. Now we're hearing Alice. This is like just the, the, all the other simulator games that we play. We always have honest, to clean up first. <laughs> I could leave it like this. There you go. Uh, 
No, you can't. I still don't understand why Alice liked this painting so much. Well, it's a nice painting. Maybe I can barricade the door with this. I should pack this thing away. I have no interest in DIY at the moment. No, oh. I'm sure I won't get caught up in these papers. Alice's family should really have some of these. That's enough for now. Jeez, oh, I'm exhausted. I'll Let's go to bed. In the morning. Let's go to bed. And get our head straight. Almost all cleaned up. Oh yeah. Not really. Take my pills. Of course. Of course. I feel like it takes me forever to finish these things. Uh, that's enough. Uh, Let's change our clothes. I need to quickly change and finish getting ready. Uh, I'm gonna be late for work again. <laughs> like every day. Nothing new there. Got my keys, got my files, check. <sighs> Time to go. You really should get cleaning in here, you know? Hire a housemate or something. Did you already change the glass? In the table? Overnight? Where did you get it from? Did you just have a spare glass? Jack. <sighs> it is I'll ask the locked. neighbors tomorrow if they saw anything suspicious. <sighs> I wonder if Ridley fixed the coffee machine. Did we just hear some screaming from one of the apartments? You okay in there, Mrs. Miss? What? I didn't say fourth floor. What? Okay. Can't get down to floor level, apparently. Okay, let's walk the rest of the way down. That door is broken. Let's go to work. Let's have a look out for Red Pete. He's not there. Optimistic. I'd better grab a coffee on the way. Uh, I think that's a good idea. Here we are. Uh, I'm well, exhausted. Wasn't it like I wonder who Stephen brought in today? Daytime when we left our house. I don't remember. I think it was right. Now it's dark. Okay. How far do you live away from your work? Hey Ridley. Good morning, Mr. Ridley. No, he's not here yet. Nope. No, I'll do without him. Oh, we are alone. In this place. Oh, come on. He was too lazy to even wheel the gurney to the autopsy room. Where the F is Ridley? <laughs> what? Who's laugh? Who's laughing? He didn't even react to it. Okay. Almost there. Now for the tough part. The body needs to be moved. Yay. Uh, where's Ridley when you need him? All right. Here we are. Just need some gloves and my apron. Then I can get to work. The apron? 
And the gloves. I'm going to need my tape recorder for this. Autopsy data. Not using the camera? Where's the camera? 7.32 p.m. Led by Dr. Jack Hanman. As always, you have to look through the police report. Begin by verifying the identity of the Jane Doe. It's most likely Harper Lloyd, age 35. Found in a well-owned house by her neighbors, Leonard and Dorothy Chelsea. Reported missing for a week. Was she found in the sewer? It is also known that the deceased was diagnosed with affective bipolar disorder. Harper was placed on drug therapy, which she dropped out of fairly regularly. During her treatment, she was under the care of her common law partner, Richard Benson, professional truck driver. Okay, there's a common denominator between all these victims that we have autopsied, dissect these last days, either drugs or alcohol, right? The last person who had contact with the deceased was her partner. Harper's last message read as follows. I'm gonna take a shit in their stupid well. <laughs> then we'll see who has the last laugh. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Police records also show that Mrs. Lloyd was in constant conflict with her neighbors. The constant parties and subsequent brawls made living in the area nearly impossible, especially they lived in a trailer park. Around. Firefighters found the body after the Chelsea family began complaining that their tap water tasted strange. Mm -hmm. at one tasted like shit. It began to smell and turn a dark color. <laughs> nice. I proceed to open the most important task uh, in forensic identification of a driver. Have you missed something there? To distinguish whether the death occurred before or after entering the water. Ah, uh, okay. look at this. Oh no. I, I hate these bodies. The victim's clothes, so it's not Is she missing an eyeball? Is she missing an eyeball? Ah, oh, was it gouged? Let's remove her clothes. Was found fully clothed when she was missing. I'm going to need the camera to document all possible suspicious marks. He's missing an eyeball. Definitely the first thing that stands out is the very advanced post-mortem gigantism. Yeah, she's all bloated, I think. Is that what he means? The skin of the deceased appears very delicate, smooth, and relaxed from being in the water for a long time. The whole body is extremely pale. Okay, now let's find marks. She's missing an eyeball. There are bruises and hemorrhages on the Red? neck. These usually occur due to increased inhalation when fighting to breathe underwater. Why isn't he... Uh commenting on that i don't know post-mortem markings are seen on the underside of the body that is on the back thighs and calves of the deceased it's likely that the deceased was lying on her back when she was fished out okay so-called washerwoman's skin on the feet. The deceased had indeed been in the water for a long time. The skin on the hands can be easily separated from the body. The separation takes the form of a glove. Hmm. Can't take a picture of the eyeball or the missing eyeball, I should say. There are some obvious scratches on the skin. Why did don't he even comment on it? The face, chest, and feet. Arm. Didn't write a note for that one. So, after and the exam, it's time to take a closer look at this. 
for the autopsy. Let the fun commence. Date, or something. The deceased was cloned. Rigor mortis does not need to be checked. Based on the state of decay. Oh, she's dead. Be sure it has subsided. Inspect the areas of concern with the magnifying glass. Hmm. Can't we check the eyeball? We see thick white foam in the mouth of the deceased, resulting from pulmonary edema. Foam is a characteristic in deaths due to drowning. Okay. So she drowned? There are obvious in the well? On the skin. She wasn't Especially dead before the dumped in, in there? These could be defensive wounds, evidence of some sort of altercation prior to death. The spots have a purplish blue red hue, which is a typical sign of the death of the organism. I love the soundtrack in this game. It's awesome. No obvious signs of struggle. The skin on the hands would have easily peeled away from Very the Very atmospheric. Some of the fingers have already lost their nails. And the yep, thigh. Pretty typical. Liver mortis are formed as a result of putrefaction of blood in the veins. And the feet? Due to the fact that the deceased was wearing shoes all the time, <clears throat> her feet are in better condition than her hands. Nevertheless, we can still notice a clear, wavy skin and the so-called washerwoman's skin texture. Okay, that's probably enough to indicate a direction for further examination. Let's find the clipboard. I'd better note that down in the records. Marks found on the neck and foaming at the mouth are typical signs of drowning people. Mushroom of foam. Those abrasions appear relatively fresh. No healing or scarring is visible. There doesn't seem to be anything unusual about this liver mortis. No signs of poison. Hands heavily wrinkled from submersion of water. Typical washerwoman's skin. Some nails are missing. There are no signs of struggle. Diffuse spots are caused by blood rotting in the veins. Considering the deceased's penchant for drinking alcohol, it could have been a mere accident. In this case, the question is, was drowning an accident or of suicidal intent? Hmm. Maybe it's just an abrasion, or maybe the result of a fight and being pushed into a well. Their distribution suggests that the victim was probably lying on her back when fished out of the water. Fortunately, the skin on the hands didn't fall off. Otherwise, I'd have trouble identifying the deceased. Hmm. Yeah. Liver mortis of a different color could indicate poison. You could do it by the teeth. Oxide, cyanides, or nitrates. However, this is not the case here. A simple trip, loss of balance, and as a result, you end up in a deep hole with no way. Could out. be. That's all for now. She was drunk and fell into the well. Ha! <laughs> I'm a poet. She fell into the well. Before I Maybe. the dissection, I'll make sure the suggested identity is correct. How do we do that? The suitcase with the fingerprint equipment should be around here somewhere. And the suitcase? Well, here it is. If the body of the deceased is well preserved, fingerprinting is similar to that of a living person. Also when it has like... Fisherwoman's skin? With decomposing bodies... Wouldn't that do... The tissue of the pads of the fingers tends no. to shrink. To remove these shrinkages, I don't know. a mixture of glycerin or air is used. Thank you for explaining. The fingerprint sheet should always be checked. Slipping fingers, too much or too little ink, or inaccurate hand position can make fingerprints illegible. Wouldn't she have more wrinkles, you know, on the fingers? When she has that fisherwoman's skin? Can we, can we make a good fingerprint out of that? I have no clue. I think we can. I'm going to conduct a dactyloscopic examination. If in fact the deceased is at the police database, I will find her. Okay. 
Let's inject some glycerin. Glycerin is injected successively between the nail and the skin of each finger. The substance then enters the fingertip, removing sugar yeah, okay. and wrinkles. I thought so. Get rid of those extra wrinkles so we can see the uh, the fingerprint wrinkles. Now I take a brush. Only when the skin is taut and elastic can you use ink. Is it good now? Brush the entire palm. Okay. Haven't I done that I now? Think it's enough. All right. I'm getting fingerprint samples. In Use the, the paper to take the fingerprints. Have to be extremely careful. The skin may fall off the hand like a glove when you take the print. Uh huh. Leave the corpse. I'll use the fax machine to add the print into the system. Yeah, of course. We're in 1991. We use fax machines. <laughs> Send fingerprints to Steven using the fax machine. Green button and go. Oh. Once the data uploads, I'll run the prints against the police database on the computer. Pair fingerprints at the computer using the database. Great, the data is there. Click upload. Upload. Now this is the early internet. Hmm? And find a matching print. Expect possible hours of fun. Hey. Drag all comp. What? Drag all comparison points to the selected fingerprint. Like so, or like so. I can already see now this is not the correct one, so. Mm, this could be it. One more. Analyze button. Anal eyes. Successful match. Everyone has a story to tell, even if it's just a police record. So, as predicted, Harper Lloyd. The deceased turned out to be Harper Lloyd. That went smoothly. I'll print this out and attach it to the medical records. Did it get printed out? Great, now we can go back to my inspection. Turn to the autopsy. So this is Harper Lloyd. I'm adding the name of the deceased. I'll start the internal examination by taking fluid from the victim's brain. A needle inserted through the nose will do the trick. Uh, okay. If the victim this is new. When she fell into the well, she must have swallowed water fighting for her life. And then diatoms, characteristics of pooled water like a well, got into the body. And then what? In the meantime, I'll check the sample under the microscope. I'm sure that these algae traces will be found in the samples. Table. Luckily, we don't need to use that one. <laughs> I will just screw with the lighting. Now I need to adjust the knobs properly and place the diatom in the center of the slide. Diatoms are single celled microscopic algae. But what are the correct? I won't even notice an army of diatoms from this distance. 100%? Great. 
This way I'll see if I'm dealing with a large concentration of these algae. The aperture still needs adjustment. Oh, I'm finally starting to see something here. Yep, now let's get the focus. It's not a dirty lens, I'm afraid. Yeah, perfect. Is that perfect? Are we good? It's not a dirty lens, I'm afraid. But rather a bad focus. And perfect. Then what? We'll just look around. These algaes. As expected, we find the aforementioned algae in the solution. Their upper part, epitheca, which overlaps the lower, hypotheca, is clearly visible. It is. The presence of diatoms in the brain samples taken indicate that the deceased was certainly alive when she fell into the water and was possibly conscious. I think she was drunk and drugged out and fell. Maybe. We'll find out. Since there were diatoms in the brain, it means that many more of them must have entered the body. Studies of the rest of the organs will most likely confirm this hypothesis. Okay, let's dissect some organs then. I can finally get to the practical part. Scalpel. I must be extra careful because the skin of the deceased is very stretched. I wouldn't want an explosion here. Oh no, please. Don't explode into my head. There we go. You can immediately see a very large swelling of the organs. In addition, all internal organs are very congested. Mm -hmm. I proceed to remove the rib gauge. No, I'm kind of getting used to this now. <laughs> but this is my copper job still. I, I wouldn't do it. The ribs have been imprinted on the lungs. So, I'm going to start by drawing blood from the lungs for testing for diatoms. If diatoms were only present in the lungs, this would mean that the victim was placed in the well after death and the perpetrator hmm. wanted to get rid of the corpse in this way. Okay. Straw sample. Put it under a microscope, now, I guess. Remove the lungs and proceed to their examination. Taking the lungs in my hand, I feel that the tissues have lost their elasticity, which is the result of water emphysema. In addition, there is significant swelling of the organs, and as a result, we have a nice imprint of the ribs. The emphysema itself, it's clear how far it's progressed, which is characteristic of drowning. Uh huh. Mark the damage along on the clipboard. <coughs> okay. Corpses found in water are worth examining with a tomograph. However, I can't count on such luxuries. So I must reach for a more archaic technology. A bucket and water. Alright, then. Let's go to the storage room. Find a bucket. Or a bouquet. And if you know that reference... You're a legend. Let's find the bouquet. It's not the storage. That's not the storage. Storage is here, right? Eh? Yep. Who? Who? Has anyone been here? What? Why do you think anyone has been here? Because the door was open? I hope no one dipped a mop in it. It's best to go to the lab for this. Hello? Ridley? Can you come in? Ridley is sleeping, as always. But he has come in. He wasn't here when we arrived. Of course, he's sleeping. That's what he does. Oh, what? Uh, hello? Oh. What? We need to take some pills. Okay. 
Uh, where do I put the bucket? Try and go in again, see if that happens again. No? <laughs> no? We put water in the bucket? No? What do you want me to do with the bucket? I don't know. It's been a while since the eyewash in this thing was changed. It's probably a health hazard now. Scalpel, did, scissors. Did we encounter a bug here? Magnifying glass, knife. Hmm. I guess I forgot to clean the knife. What am I missing here? A considerable collection. Uh, am I missing something? Hello? What do you want me to do? Just perform a drown test? I don't know how to perform a drown test. Just running around with a bucket in my hand. Please don't say we encountered a bug. I don't know when this last auto saved. Historically, ah, okay. the lung float test is used to detect infanticide. Fill the bucket with water. The water should be at room temperature. Room temperature? And he's putting only hot water in there. <laughs> to test for this, I have to place the lungs in a container of water. This checks if there is air in the lungs. And speaking of lungs, everything is ready to bring them here. Let's go get the lungs. You just please, just lay there. Don't scare me again. Of course, such a study isn't without flaws. Air may have entered a newborn's airways during resuscitation attempts. Gases released during decomposition could also give a false result. Let's bring the lungs to the lab sink. In this case, however, it's about something else. Namely, the amount of fluid in the lungs. <coughs> I don't want to move when he speaks because sometimes we skip the dialogue. So I don't want to do that. I want to hear everything. Just for this, I have to place the lungs in a container of water and wait to see if they fall or if they will float on the surface. There's the lungs in the water. They sink. Just as I assumed, the lungs collapsed easily. That's what they're supposed to do, right? What do I know? <laughs> Let's bring them back. Fluid could have entered Dissect the lungs them. during panic attempts to catch breath underwater, but it could also be the result of bacterial infections or cancer. So further investigation is needed. It's dissecting. I move on to dissecting the lungs of the deceased. You can hear the distinct, very unpleasant crackling of the tissues being cut through. I don't. Maybe you do. The Gently. is remarkably pale. Although small hemorrhagic foci and petechia are present on the surface. <sighs> Alright. Is now, that all normal? I will check the collected fluid under a microscope. 
If we find 20 diatoms on the slide, it can be considered drowning, and our result is not false positive due to possible contaminations. Okay, let's do it again. Let's see. Although I expect I won't even notice an army of diatoms. Hmm. Great. Hmm. This way I'll see if I'm dealing with a large concentration of these algae. Still saying the same thing as before? The I'm used to it. still needs adjustment. Uh, the image is too dark. Oh. I'm finally starting to see something here. Let's focus. It's not a dirty lens. And perfect. Let's find the algae. They're here. It's a large concentration as well. As expected. In solution, the diatoms are clearly visible. There are smaller and larger clusters of them. There will definitely be more than 20 of them. Yep. Oh, I'll make a note of all this. Turn to the autopsy. So far, this case looks pretty standard. It's clear from the beginning that it's drowning. Uh, well, the procedure requires me to check everything anyway. So she did die in the well. So, I move on to checking the other organs. I ligate the heart and then remove it for inspection. Let's remove the heart. Have a look. Strongly developed putrefactic hemolysis, the organ can be seen at first glance. Apart from that, no signs of a heart attack or other heart disease. Heart is normal, I think. I move on to the next organ. This time, it's the liver. It's immediately apparent that the deceased didn't care for herself. Like most organs, her liver is enlarged and severely she congested. She was drinking heavily. The beginnings of cirrhosis are visible in some areas. I transfer the organ to a board and proceed to dissect. Okay, let's dissect the liver. Very carefully. Easy now, easy now. Don't draw out of the lines or cut out of the lines. The cross section clearly shows dilated veins and many small hemorrhagic foci. Uh -huh. I must admit that this is quite a feat, considering the rather young age of the deceased. Harper enjoyed drinking so much that she might not have lasted a few more years. How old was she? I don't know. I move on to the stomach. I take a sample of the fluid for testing. Stack the syringe and obtain a sample for testing for diatoms. Back to the microscope. It looks very turbid. I guess. I'll see what happens after spinning, but that's in a moment. Now, I carefully ligate the organ, then cut it off. Okay, maybe not. It's enlarged, probably full of putrid gases. I transfer it to the board and carefully open it, checking the contents. Okay, let's get dissecting. It's a difficult one to dissect. One thing you'd never get used to is how much this desk smells. Well, you should cover your nose with something. That's what I would have done. And the eyes. <coughs> Imagine if this thing exploded in his face, you know? There are some, some glasses or something coming in your nose and mouth. Would be a good idea. Okay, the stomach is full of fluid and unidentified organic matter, which is probably leftover food. So let's check the diatoms. Again. Again. But in a <laughs> centrifuge for a change. The problem with examining drowned people is being able to show whether oh, the death no. was due to drowning or whether something else contributed to the death. Oh no. Heart attack, 
drugs, homicide, or some accident. Such an analysis requires viewing from different angles and a careful interpretation of the collected data, including those from the field. That's why it's so important to collect as many samples as possible. <sighs> Unfortunately. We have to use the centrifuge again. That will fuck up all the lights. Sometimes, not every time. Okay, this is one last little sample. Let's put it in. Now set. Uh, let's find out how to find diatoms. Presses of diatoms. 35 minutes at 25%. Okay. 35, 25. Is that 35? There. 25 minutes. Right? There we go. Will the light flicker? No? We got lucky again. Collect the sample. Done. I'll run it directly into the chromatograph and run it against the data from the police. Let's do that. Let's go to the lab. I'm certain the analysis will show similarities between the fluid and water in Chelsea's well. Place the samples into the rack. Not your girlfriend's rack. Don't have a dirty mind. Take the pipette and set it to draw three milliliters of fluid. Let me think. Three milliliters should be fine. Yeah, set up pipette with three milliliters. Here we go. Draw a sample. Here we go. Okay. Put now it in the, the chromatograph. Check the results. Yes. yes. The water sample matches the one provided by the police. Okay. Uh, well, the results are quite clear. <sighs> I was hoping it would be a more interesting case. Well, it's very straightforward. Definitely was drowning, I think. Analysis indicates the same origin. Blah blah blah. <laughs> There's little left to do. I'm going to check the airway patency of the deceased. Let's check the trachea. Looks like there's something stuck in the trachea. I'm moving to the board for further inspection. Or not trachea, trachea. That's what I meant to say. You know? On the metal tray. Yeah. I dissect the trachea and open the organ. Inside, I find a wedding ring. Is ring? This is interesting. Let me look at it. Hmm. Based on the size, I can say that it's a woman's wedding ring. Quite standard from the outside. There's an engraving inside. Yeah. Okay. You have been checking it. Why can't I press the right mouse button? What the fuck? But this is my ring. What? This is ring. What? But but how did it? How did it? But this should be at home. I have it. Oh. At home. No, somebody it's broke in and took it. I have to check this out. Where are my meds? 
You said red, Pete. Where the fuck are my meds? It's in the bathroom. Hello? Huh? Hello? Oh, I got the goose button. What? Huh? What's going on? So Red Pete broke into our house, took Alice's ring, killed this woman, and put the ring in her trachea. Jesus Christ! Holy so Mother of Moses! I, I have to check the apartment. It can't be. Jesus Christ! Let's return home. Ridley, I'm going home for the night. Mr. Ridley. Mr. Ridley! What's all the ruckus? I need to... I need to go home. Immediately. What? Now? Yeah, I now. Have, to. Have, to. have you seen anyone here this morning? Anybody suspicious? No, there was no one. Now you wasn't was, here. But only for a moment, then she left. What's wrong with you, Hammond? Okay, okay. Thanks. What about the corpse? I'll come back, I promise. Why wasn't Ridley here when we arrived? Hmm? Is Ridley, are you in on it? Jesus Christ! Do you think Ridley is in on it? I don't know. I, I guess we'll find out. I, I have to check this out. Holy... Air fryer, man. It. Where? <sighs> Trinket box was here, right? Where is it now? Where's the trinket now? Huh? Where did you put the trinket box? Was it? No, it was in here, of course. Please, please, please be. It's, it's, it is gone. It's not. It is gone. I need to go. I need to go. Take some more pills. You definitely sound like you need them. This is sick. Fuck. And now call Steven. Hurry up, man. Come on, Steven. Pick up the fucking phone. They took the ring! What? What? What ring? What are you Alice's about? ring. They took the wedding ring. Alice's wedding ring! One sec. You mean burglary? You said nothing was missing. Yes, yes, I know. I know that. I, I don't know. I, I was jittery. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't notice. I don't know, but... <laughs> that, that's not the worst of it. I don't remember I if it was missing it when we looked earlier. The deceased I was working on. Do you understand? I pulled it out of a dead woman's trachea. What? I don't. What? I don't know what's going on. You think Red Pete wants revenge? He's playing with me. Huh? I knew it. I knew it from the beginning. This is going to happen. I didn't make it up. Jack, listen to me. Try to calm down. Don't leave the apartment. I'll be with you right away, okay? I'm on my way. What Hurry sane up. person would do something like that? How? And when? When the fuck? Fucking Ridley lets in whoever he likes as usual. What are you, what are you saying? Steve. S Steven. Don't leave me, man. Come on. Fuck. Oh, God. What now? Steven just hang up on us? Have a drink. Calm yeah. Calm down. You deserve Just a drink. Calm down. I need Jesus. Definitely uh, need a drink. What's going on? And maybe some pills. 
Pills and whiskey is a good combination, you know? Would you drink that whiskey? Maybe the burglary or Red Pete could have poisoned it or something, you know? Jesus. <sighs> Will we pass out now? We are not in a good shape. <sighs> chapter 3. If you want to know what happens in chapter 3, leave a like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next episode. Thank you for watching. Until next time. Bye bye.